Welcome back our discussion about how to choose an investment during uncertain times and gold investment. And we have Mr. Amrit Nawani, Vice President of Monex Investing the Futures, talking now about gold itself. So what's your view on gold today? Mm -hmm. no. Gold as usual, everybody's favorite topic, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Especially always in does. <laughs> always everybody's favorite topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so gold right now mm -hmm. is trading at sixteen forty. Sixteen forty. Yeah. It uh, looks tremendously cheap, okay? But my view is that it could get cheaper. Mm -hmm. yeah, Why? It's doing uh, because of the fact that uh, right now gold is built, the price of gold, the rise of gold mm -hmm. has been due to the fact that we're expecting the US to print more money mm -hmm. to initiate QE3 mm -hmm. as they call it, right? Mm -hmm. So now with the US economy doing pretty okay, the chances of them printing more money mm -hmm. is less, less likely. Mm -hmm. Now if the chance of them printing less uh, money is less likely, People are going to say, you know what? We're just going to choose dollar. Why yeah. choose gold? What's so great about gold? Yeah, yeah. What's where's the shine? So special. Gold? What's so special about gold? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, a lot of people ask me uh, mm -hmm. if personally would gold go to two thousand, and I'm kind of skeptical it'll go to two thousand, mm -hmm. as if you see in the charts technically as well, mm -hmm. gold has been forming lower highs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last low high it formed was sixteen eighty, and after which it is struggling, mm -hmm. struggling just to go to sixteen fifty. It's mm -hmm sort of stuck at six, six. So it's not possible to hitting 2000? Uh, not to say it's not possible, perhaps much later, mm -hmm. but not like in the in the near in, term. In, near term. in fact, in the near term, I'm seeing gold to be, it's okay, it's not mm -hmm. excellent right now, but uh, maybe around 1600 would be a better buy. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So does gold stand to gain from the uncertainty economic condition like Indonesia and the developed countries economy? Mm -hmm. So how do you see that uh, investors is the right uh, uh, to choose gold as their investment. Okay, so basically in the past when uh, there used to be a European crisis, gold would actually gain, it would actually go up. But now gold is acting more like a commodity. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's a crisis or you know those, those uh, yields of Spanish and Italian bonds, they yeah. tend to spike up. Yes. Instead of gold going up, gold is going down. Mm -hmm. It's it's correcting like a commodity. It's mm -hmm. not behaving like a safe haven asset, it's behaving like a commodity. Mm -hmm. Talking about uh, the India, that I read the article that Indonesia uh, the, in India, uh, the demand of physical gold is uh, rising. Mm -hmm. So it's like one of the problems that, that could uh, hide the gold price? Actually, gold price, uh, recently there have been some strikes in India, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, which is why the gold, from the physical point of view, from physical demand, is not picking up. Mm -hmm. But the strike has just gotten all over. But uh, we're expecting the physical demand to really pick up around August. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now obviously we don't want to be buying in August because all the big institutional investors have already bought. Uh -huh. So we would perhaps wait until uh, one month before August, perhaps June to July, mm -hmm. when we see that uh, gold should continue its bullish run. Mm -hmm. So 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 June to July is the right timing to buy gold. Yeah, right now we gold will not surge like how it did before. Uh -huh. It's still uh, it will it'll go up here and uh, up and down a little bit. I think 16, uh, 1550 to 1600 is a very good level to buy gold. Yeah. 1640, it's like, it's right there in front of us, but nobody wants to touch it right now, temporarily. Yeah. So, so what's the strategy for investors maybe to choose the gold in June or July? So how, what's the scheme that you should choose? If you were to ask me, I would say uh, gold is bound to correct further uh -huh. for now. So uh, if you have a futures position, you could actually short sell and, mm -hmm. and, and, and make some money out of it. Physical buyers, you could buy, you could buy the current price, but uh, be prepared for a dip in which you can probably accumulate more holdings. Okay, I see. So now what about crude oil? Is the price sustainable about $100 and what are the implications for the global economy? Okay, crude oil is currently trading at 103.75. It is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It is basically gone up. It is artificially inflated due to the fact that uh, all these Iran problems are coming up. Yeah, yeah. And it's not sustainable above 100. It's very problematic, as we saw in Indonesia as well. Yeah, yeah. We saw a whole ruckus about the yeah, yeah. price of fuel, mm -hmm. which is because crude oil basically it was 100, 110 at its highest, very high. So in my opinion, crude oil should settle to a level around uh, it will probably slump to around 90 and perhaps correct to around 95 to 102. Mm -hmm. It'll range between that area, mm -hmm. which is more sustainable. So in your opinion, what's the impact about this kind of crude oil price, uh, not only to the good, uh, to the fuel price in Indonesia itself, mm -hmm. so to, to the other investment, like gold maybe or another? Okay. So crude oil and uh, gold, they actually move in the same direction. Okay. Okay. So if there's a problem in the economy, because both are commodities, right? Mm -hmm. Crude oil is a commodity, gold is a commodity. Both are going to fall. Mm -hmm. when, there's a good, uh, when there's good news from the economy, the stock markets go up, 
that means the commodities go up yeah. and crude oil and gold both being commodities yeah. would rise up as well mm. yeah. now talking about dollar maybe how what's your view on us dollar and rupiah versus rupiah okay so right now dollar is basically driven by risk averse risk aversion and risk appetite mm -hmm. okay so that means when yeah so there's when there's risk appetite in the markets which means there's good news everybody throws away the dollar yeah nobody's interested in the dollar anymore everybody goes into the more exciting uh, assets which are basically stocks commodities yeah. and rupiah rupiah is always exciting because it's really? an emerging it's emerging currency emerging okay. market so, currency. so what are the factors influencing it i mean what's the main factors that uh people not only uh, not now not few the dollar as a good currency hmm. i think it's mainly because of the news coming out of the us and so far the news is pretty pretty good mm -hmm. so hence we're seeing the dollar um, strengthen as well as a result of that mm -hmm. yeah. so so how about the euro itself like still sustaining about 1.3 level now mm -hmm. yeah. okay the euro in my opinion in some time it should go below 1.25 area it is not sustainable at 1.3 so of course everybody is wondering okay we're talking about euro crisis the euro yeah. still above 1.3 uh, so it's, it's still fine it's so, odd right okay. people are wondering why is it above 1.3 yeah. the reason why is because it's strongly newsly driven and very very volatile mm -hmm. very up and down mm -hmm. and the news some, sometimes we see good news euro surges sometimes yeah. we see bad news euro goes down it's very news driven mm -hmm. and very much driven by those yields those mm -hmm. uh, those italian and spanish yes yeah. so, so you see there's the the yields of uh Spanish and Italian bonds. So how do you see this? I mean, the impact of that mm -hmm. bonds yields. The bond yields basically, we don't know where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. But whenever they spike, then that's a bad thing for the eurozone. Oh, and that means we're going to see a slump in mm -hmm. stocks. We're going to see a slump in commodities mm -hmm. and a slump in the euro as well. So any prediction on euro crisis? Euro crisis, <laughs> in my opinion, is yeah. far from solved. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is uh, quite dangerous, in my opinion. I don't mean to strike panic into anyone, mm -hmm. but it's. It has not been contained yet. Everybody says, "Yeah, it's been solved. It's been solved." It's yeah. not been solved, and there's a risk of it uh, spreading to Spain, uh -huh. which is a very large economy actually. Mm -hmm. So now we move to Australia. Okay. So Australian dollar has been the, the favorite for local investors, international investors. But yeah. in the last few, three months, they they underperform. Yeah. So how do you see this? Okay, the Australian dollar has underperformed basically because of the rate hike. Mm -hmm. They are ex uh, they were expecting a rate hike, but in fact, they cut the rates. So now that makes Aussie less favorable, right? Everybody in Indonesia, they want to look for the highest yield. Mm -hmm. And internationally as well, everybody was like, wants to be like, which bank gives me the highest yield? Yeah. Now, international investors have the same mentality. Uh -huh. Which currency gives me the highest yield? Mm -hmm. The moment a uh, central bank cuts the interest rate, then they're like, oh, okay. So this country, this currency is not so appealing, not so attractive anymore. So, attractive, so the Aussie used to be 4.75% a year, mm -hmm. the highest among the G10. Mm -hmm. Now the Aussie, the interest rate is merely 4%. 4%. Yeah, 4 so, so what's your prediction for Australian dollar for a few months next? Okay. Actually, uh, there's a very important news coming out tomorrow, the inflation figures. Now, if the, if the inflation figures are good, the Aussie dollar will go back to its upward trajectory. Okay. If the inflation figures are below expectation, mm -hmm. we could see the Aussie go back down to one the parity area, perhaps. Okay. One. It will be continued. Sure. What of discussion is coming up next? Stay with us.